Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Suburban Home Center, Wyoming, Arizona. And on my channel, I always try to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-sustaining. When I put all those things together, Joe, cannot, Joe and I can really make a wonderful life, no matter if we're in Wyoming or if we're in Arizona. Today, I'm making my salve. I've been making this salve for lots and lots of years. About two years ago, I did a video on my lotion. It starts the same way. It contains the same herbs. But the, the salve, what I really started making was for cuts and bruises. That's why I started to make it. I am not a medical professional. I'm just a girl that's trying to be self-sustaining, self-reliant, and self-sufficient. And this is one of the ways that I do it. No need to go to the store for ointments and salves. I can produce it myself. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. It has been a great salve. Cuts, bruises, all kinds of stuff. I have people that um, get it from me because they have shingles, hemorrhoids, just all kinds of stuff. I was surprised and I knew all those herbs were all healing herbs. I did. But that combination together has just really made a great salve. So I'm just going to show you me making it. It'll have the recipe down in the description. In the video, I'll give you all the different amounts. If you'd like to try it, that would be great. Let's go make some salve. Now I use organic herbs. I have calendula, chamomile, comfrey, white willow bark, and yarrow. And two great places to buy those are Mountain Rose Herbs and Bulk Herb Store. Now I'm using a coffee grinder. I like this one because it has a really big reservoir that you can grind herbs up in. We're going to use beeswax, some olive oil, and I like the extra light taste one, so it doesn't really affect the smell as much. And you have to have some kind of alcohol. Um, an in inexpensive vodka will work for that. So we're going to grind up our herbs. This is um, the chamomile, the little flowers. And we are just going to put the lid on, and you just press down, and it just grinds away. You can use a blender or a Vitamix also, but a coffee grinder works really well and doesn't take up very much space. And see how it just turns powdery. Now I need a cup of all five of my herbs and I'm going to grind them up, put them in a big bowl. There goes the calendulas in the big bowl and then I have to mix it up. I'm going to use just under a liter of the alcohol. It will really depend on the size that you chopped everything up. Now what you want it is really moist, but not at all soggy. So I pour some in, mix it, pour it in, mix it again. And this is what it should look like. See, it's really saturated, but there's not extra liquid any place. And that's what you want. Now I'm gonna put mine in jelly jars. They're mason jars that you would put jelly in. And they also go in my crock pot and I can fit eight of them in my crock pot. So I'm going to fill my jelly jars up a third to a half of the way. Most of the time it's more like a half. And to that I'll add the olive oil. So I'm just going to go through, do all eight of my jars, and put the olive oil in there. I mix it up well. I use a chopstick. It works really easily. Now one of the things that you need to make sure is that you wipe the rims. And so you can just take a paper towel, wipe it so that you're getting any of the oil or any of the herbs that might be on the rim. And then you're going to put the lid on and squeeze it finger tight. It's going to go in the crock pot on low. If you happen to have a setting that says keep warm, that's the better. And it's going to stay in that crock pot constantly on for three days. So at the three day point, then you can open the jars up and 
I have a strainer on a big pot and I'm going to dump it in there and I will use a spatula to make sure I'm getting everything out of it and I'm going to literally put all eight jars of our, my mixture in that strainer and let it drip overnight. So anywhere from 12 to 24 hours, let it drip because you want all of that oil to come out and I'll just spread it around the strainer and let it drip. And I'm going to cover it with saran wrap, put the lid on of the stock pot and let it sit overnight. Anywhere from 12 to 24 hours is great. Now it's the next day and it has drained all out. Could you do other things with those herbs? Probably. Mine is just going to the compost pile. I'm going to add a tablespoon of vitamin E and some lemon essential oil to there and mix it up well. I have it on very low heat because you don't want it to boil. You don't want it to get very hot, but you want it warm enough that you can add beeswax to it. Now, are you going to have some particles from the, the herbs? You will. Now you can, I'm using little pieces of beeswax, but you could use a brick, whatever you want, but you have to have about one and a half to two cups of beeswax. And it varies a little bit every single time, but I'm just going to add one cup at a time, spin it, stir it around until it melts and it starts to heat up a little bit. Now, an easy way to tell is you use a metal spoon. I'm going to get those little pieces of wax off there and you dip it into your sap, pull it out and the metal spoon will let it solidify really fast. So I just wait a few seconds and see how it's solidifying on both sides of the spoon. And what I want is kind of a thick, smooth, silky feeling of the, of my mixture. Then I can start pouring it into the jars and I'm using one ounce jars and two ounce jars. It, it just has worked well. Now they're starting to dry. They're starting to cool down. The larger jars haven't yet, but I'm going to let them sit overnight without the lid. And here's the next morning. And they look fabulous. Well, maybe you thought that was interesting. Maybe you thought, I'm not making that. Totally up to you. But it's something that's worked for me, my friends, and my family. And so I wanted to share it with you guys. Will I have some available? I'll put some up on my Etsy store. And that's in the description below. You can send me an email if you're interested. This video isn't about me selling it. This video is about giving you a recipe for you to try, to see if you like it, to see if your family likes it. I just love being self-sufficient, self-reliant, and self-sustaining. It's just part of who we are and part of suburban homesteader, Wyoming, Arizona. It's only for external use, never internal use, just ex external, because it's a salve. It should go on your skin. It can really soften up dry skin. That has been just an amazing thing. After just a day or two, you'll see a big difference. So I hope you try it. All of the herbs, I'm going to list where you can get them. If you don't grow them yourself. Now, if you grow them yourself, that's fabulous. And in fact, the reason why I decided to do it at this time was it's a perfect time to order those seeds so that you can grow them yourself, grow them, dry them, grind them up and use them. Back home, I grow lots and lots of the, the herbs that I have down here. I had to order them because I'm in Arizona and I didn't plan on making any more salve while I was down here. But I hope it was an interesting video, video for you. It just pushed you one more step to being self-sufficient. I hope you try it. I will see you next time. Have a great afternoon.